my friend Mitch Mitchell Hale from the UK showed me this uh, technique for tuning uh, some rules not to fire on some conditions. We're going to learn some things about building blocks and some tricks to do that. But the task at hand here, at hand here is we have this rule that is actually firing. We have this IP from the UK, this one is from Russia. Now are pinging the external IP of the network that I am in here. But we'll see why we don't want we don't consider this event big enough for it to fire an offense. So we're gonna modify the rule. But first let's actually open the first of these offenses and take a look at those flows. And you'll see me pausing the video in order to avoid revealing the IP addresses of the network that I am. So here are all those flows and we can see that this IP from this port, actually we can see part of the port here, from the same port, is actually testing whether these ports in my network on that particular IP are open. But none of them are. And that's what you see these destination bytes being zero. This can be an end map or any kind of mechanism that the guys are using to see whether these ports are open. And this thing happens all the time. And we, we have, uh, I've seen IPs in, here in this network from Iran, from Russia, from China, from India, from other countries, testing and see what the heck is open for them to see if they want to explo exploit it later. So, and that's why we are not worried about this one. So what we want to do is modify that rule and say, well, if the destination bytes are zero, don't fire. Let's actually go back to that particular offense and display the rule to understand the logic and how we're going to be modifying it. So let's look at this uh, together. So what we see First is that that's the name of the rule. Remember that because we're going to be modifying it later. But the rules start by saying, well, if this happens within my DMZ, and this, you define this in the network hierarchy, and the traffic comes from the outside in or remote to remote. Because I did a short video that explained why remote to remote is important in here. But basically, is if you've forgotten to include one of the IPs on the network topology. But nevertheless, the next, the other condition calls two building blocks look for any recon activity or any suspicious activity and this is the timing of it think of building blocks as function call in standard programming when you when you invoke a function in any language it's because you don't want to put in your main program all the logic you want to create a separate function that you call from the main program that will execute all that logic and should you want to improve that function later well you modify the function you don't touch the main program same concept in here so these two building blocks has a bunch of logic in there on, the, on their own and they are going to be called by the, this rule when it's actually evaluating every one of the test conditions. So if this one is true, this one is true, then these building blocks are actually invoked. So what we want to do is introduce a, an, an, an additional condition here. Say, well, when the destination bytes are zero, don't, don't fire, right? Put one of those and not conditions. You know, when you click here, the and, and and make it a not. But the problem that we have is that this, you know that when you create rules, you have rules that are fire on events, rules that fire on flows, and f rules that fire on both. And the and the advantage of flows of, of combined of that common rule is that it works for both. But the disadvantage is that not all these test conditions are uh, the, the, these all these conditions in here are a subset of the ones that you find separately on events and separately on flows. And how does that show up? Well, if I try to find for a condition that look for bytes or package, or packets, if I type here bytes, there's no condition for that. Why? Well, because this is a common rule. So what we're going to be doing is creating a building block. Think of it as a function that we're going to be uh, invoking, uh, but it will be uh, on flows, so the, it, it will have these bytes and packets conditions in there. So let's actually go into the rules and create that building block. So we go here on the action and we're going to create a new flow rule. You will see that it's going to be a building block, but you'll see why uh, we start like this. And 
notice that in here, because this is on flows, if I, if I type bytes here, I should find that, that test condition. And we can actually say, and when the, not source byte, but destination byte, remember that, is not even greater, it's equal to zero. Right? Uh, then I don't want this, uh, this to fire. This is the, I'm building the building block. You can actually do the same thing uh, but instead of byte, you can actually select here packets, right? No, no difference. But you may actually want to uh, start this building block with some context because you don't want this to be evaluated each and every time. So let's actually look for the context and put and the context. Let me actually bring that one up by clicking in here. And the context is uh, remote to local. And we're also going to add remote to remote. Again, if, if I ever forget to put in my network hierarchy a particular IP address and I see it firing in here, it's because it's happening within my network and I need to, it will be a reminder for me to update my network topology. So this is basically the building block we are going to be using. Say, well, when the traffic is coming from the outside in, and remember, we can use this building block because even though we have this test condition in the other rule, we don't need to assume that that's the case because this can be used by other uh, rules in the future. So this, it's not a bad idea to put that condition in there. It says when, when the destination bytes are zero, uh, we, we don't want whoever invokes this building block to actually fire. What we're going to be doing next is that we're going to include this into a group. Let's call this the group tuning. It is important to put some notes. Sorry about that. And uh, whatever is the appropriate time frame, but even though it's, it's you get the creation and modification time, so you don't have to put those timestamps there. But it's important to put enough information so whoever comes back after that can see this and remember that the, the use case manager app can even read the, the notes. So you can even search a particular rule or building block by those comments. So now, instead of clicking finish, which by the way, we cannot do, because even when you do, it says, well, you haven't put a name because we are not going to create a rule. We're going to actually export this as a building block. So we're going to click here, export as building block, and we're going to give it a name. And that's the name that we're going to be doing. We're tuning this, and this is harmless scanning. And we're going to click here, save. Now our building block is actually created, so we can actually exit here. And we have our building block ready to be used. So it is safe to cancel out of here because we, we got what we actually wanted. In fact, if I select here building blocks and I am going to uh, sort them by creation date, we see it right there. So now what we're going to be doing is that we are going to look for the rule that we want to actually modify by making it call this function or this building block. If you remember that's the name of the actual rule. We click on it and we are going to add the calling to that building block and the way we look for the condition that we call it is, is we type here rule then we take that that one in here and it's not going to be a rule but it's going to be a building block and the name of the building block Remember it was called harmless scanning. We add that. It's, it's taking some time because it's doing some validation, some checking to make sure I didn't do anything that is going to have a dependency of some kind of conflict. So I come back saying that it's okay. And I have it here. Most likely I want to raise this because I don't want this test condition to be uh, 
evaluated that la that's the last one we actually want to make it even uh, yeah why not uh, right actually let me click in here let me yeah about there is right so and the, the DMC is local to remote remote to local and the only thing that I need to do is just precisely say well and not right so w whenever you go to this building block this function call and you find that the destination bytes is zero uh, stop the evaluation and that rule should stop firing it's not a bad idea to put here whatever makes uh, sense in your environment for documentation. Actually, I thought I was typing. Something that makes sense in your environment. So, the task is actually done. Now, we have modified this rule and it should not fire anymore when uh, we get scannings that are innocuous, that do not uh, yield any results. How do you test this out? How do you verify that what you've done is actually right? Let me actually go to the network uh, activity to show you that. Okay, so I actually shortened some of the fields here to protect the IP addresses. Uh, the condition that you will use will be rule when the custom rules equals and then I can select the group and remember that the group that we had was uh, user tuning right there's only one there so it automatically puts it there yes they add that particular filter right and what we do is that we go back in time let's say you know last uh, five minutes or so we actually see some data. I'm going to open one of these, so these reveals, notice that the destination bytes are zero, so this reveals that there are other, even other IPs actually poking on my network. We can even see some of the places where these things are actually happening. So let's, let's open one of these, the, the, the first of these events. So as we can see here, our uh, the building block that we built is actually right here. Okay, it's actually evaluating as true because that's precisely what we wanted it to do. So that rule will not fire again. So if we refresh the offenses screen we see that uh, that the last time that anything contributed to this offense for firing was 25 minutes ago and we even saw some events on the scanning happening as we were doing this so it's kind of nice that we can see that those events came but those were not added to this particular uh, offense because now the logic prevent that from happening. I hope that this has helped you learn a few things about building blocks and how to tune modify rules and getting to know a little bit more about how Curator works and thanks very much to, to Mitch Hale for providing this information.